Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, you get me. I'm going to be talking all about anti-aging skincare, the effect of stress on the skin, and what you can do about it today. So, Where does this podcast come from? Why do I want to talk about skin? Well, in the last year, I let my skin go. I guess life just kind of got in the way. I'll be honest, I used to be pretty darn addicted to skincare. In fact, when I owned a spa, it was like a kid in a candy shop. Like every time the skin wraps came in, I was like jonesing for for what they had next for us, you know, and and I would dive into the conferences and and look at all the labels and try to find the cleanest products out there that that gave results. And I learned a couple things along the way. And today I'm going to share that with you. So if you're like me and, and you're over 35 and you're starting to notice some fine lines and wrinkles and you're looking at yourself in the mirror and going, who the heck is that? staring back at me, this podcast is for you. So probably about, I would say, two months ago, I caught a glimpse in the mirror and was like, dang, girl, you really let yourself go on this one. And granted, it was at the end of the summer. My skin definitely, I mean, I'm all, I'm outside all the time as much as I possibly can. So yes, my skin definitely took a hit and I could see the discoloration really setting in, especially on the left side of my face. Now, it's curious I mentioned the left side of my face. Does anybody listening know why someone's left side of their face may have more signs of skin damage than the right? Hmm. It's because of how we drive. The sun beats in on that left side and hits us right at the side of our face. Now, granted, I'm coming off of living in Washington State for the last eight plus years. And yeah, there's not a lot of sun, but boy, when the sun comes out, everybody's out. And I would say I did a lot of different things out and about. But you know what? That's the last eight years. We got to go way back to think about skincare. And that whole story starts when I was a kiddo. So I want you all to think about it for a minute and think about how your parents were in terms of their habits with your sunscreens and, and keeping you out of the sun between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m., those, quote, dangerous hours of, of the sun. Those were the days when things really actually started to take hold in in terms of your skin damage and you don't even know it, you're not even aware of it. And then you move into your teenage years where you can't be told anything and there's no freaking way you're putting on sun block or sunscreen because the cool kids don't do that. And then you get in your 20s and you're still kind of like not thinking about it per se, but you want the boys to look at you or the girls are however. And you're like, yeah, maybe I'll pay attention a little bit. But then you get to your 30s and you're like, oh my gosh, what have I done? And so today is somewhat of a skin confessional, but also a lot of lessons on on what you can do to help your skin right now. So maybe many of you who are over 35 might have kind of felt in the category where, where I was when I was younger. I definitely didn't like putting on sunblock I would fight my mom and I was outside all the time I was on swim team I rode my bike a lot then you turn it into the winter and I skied I sledded I snowboarded I did it all the things now we have two types of exposure but same with sun right it's it's reflection of of water back on the skin and then you have snow reflection back on the skin so if anyone's had that that's like double exposure if you will and I had a stint where I lived in Mexico for a year and it was all the rage to put on baby oil and Coca-Cola. And who did I learn this from? My mom. <laughs> Fuck people. She was like, yeah, it's what we did back in the 60s. Let's, let's do it. See if we can prime our skin. Oh boy. I got on that kick and for some reason I love being tan. 
and the more tan I could be, the better, you know, <laughs> I thought I looked um, until one of my friend's moms was like, you kind of look Somali and it's it's weird. Um, but mm. hey, you know, the sun, I always feel good in the sun. And a lot of people I've talked to can resonate with that. That's the only time like they feel warm to their bones. And and maybe you could judge that I, I perhaps have some circulation issues. Yes. Thyroid issues? No, but I've questioned it. So those of you who are sun whores, as I call myself, um, we don't we didn't think about these things of, of what it does to the sun now or what the sun does to our skin. Now add some years to life and some stress to that. And now we've got some more factors. What is the number one nutrient that your skin absolutely loves? Do you guys know? Vitamin C. L-ascorbic acid in particular has been found to be the number one vitamin for your skin to help with cell turnover, rejuvenation. And in fact, you could put it on your skin and see visibly cha- visible changes right after putting it on. Don't believe me? Go get yourself a vitamin C serum and try it out. You will see change. Is it going to be like you turn the clock back 20 years? Absolutely not. Do you guys remember that show? 20 years younger? I was always impressed by the transformations of people. But the big thing that they weren't looking at with these folks is what was going on internally. Like these people got new teeth. They got, you know, some plastic surgery sometimes. They gave them a whole bunch of makeup. Yeah, you can put some lipstick and some makeup on anyone when done right and definitely turn the clock back. But we're not thinking about what's going on internally. And vitamin C is a vitamin that is incredible for helping with cellular turnover, helping even to prevent cancer. There's tons of research on IV vitamin C therapies. I've had an IV of vitamin C. It's invigorating to say the least. In fact, it's the one thing when I was learning how to do IVs in school my partner did an IV push. So this is when you've got like a big syringe, a 60 cc syringe, and you attach it to a butterfly in a tube. And, and basically we're sitting across from each other and she, she goes to push the IV and she, she got really excited about doing it. And, and I, you know, was I don't know, I didn't know any better. She, she pushed it too fast and I passed out. Oh man. But I've had vitamin C IVs since then, and they're quite amazing. And in fact, I I find them to be one of the best things for folks who are wanting some adjunct or alternative care for, for cancer or even suspicious lesions um, in the breast. It's something to think about. Now, I'm not saying it is a cancer cure. I'm not saying any of those things. I'm just saying it's something to consider and somewhat, something to, to grab a professional and, and work with them. I'm not a cancer um, specialist, but hey, find someone in your area that is with IVs and, and you'll learn a ton from them. Now, back in the day, there was a guy named Linus Pauling. He did a ton of research on vitamins, but in particular vitamin C. And he's kind of the one that we can all thank for a lot of the details as to what vitamin C can do for us. Now, here's an interesting component about vitamin C as it relates to cortisol and kind of back to the conversation about what stress does to our skin. So the more our cortisol levels rise, the more vitamin C we blow through. And... Interestingly enough, vitamin C also has an impact on our nervous system and its homeostasis, so keeping it in balance. And the more stressed we get, the more we're prone to mood disorders and in particular anxiety. And there's even been some pretty cool research done by the Journal of, uh, of Nutritional Biochemistry. And those guys found that there's a connection between taking higher amounts of vitamin C and calming anxiety. That's freaking cool. Now here's my take on it and kind of what I see in practice. Have I ever used high dose vitamin C to work on anxiety? Not necessarily. But would I try it? Sure. I just had to have some people that that would tell me that they're up for it. Because with internal vitamin C, as maybe you guys might have noticed, when you take it to your level where the body has had enough, 
we call that bowel tolerance, and you get loose stools. And for some people, they're not down with that. I don't know about you, but a lot of ladies in my circle were like, loose stools, yes, I might lose some weight. If you think that way, you're not alone. (laughs) Um, But the point here is that the vitamin C can be incredible for helping with with really boosting your immune system, but also helping with the anxiety. And so you go to bowel tolerance. So you get a loose stool. You're taking, you know, a thousand milligrams after a thousand milligrams after a thousand milligrams. And then when you get a loose poop, you go, okay, I took 5,000 milligrams of vitamin C. My my dosage will be 4,000. You stay at that. That way you don't have the loose stool going over and over again. And you're getting good amounts of vitamin C. Now, As you may know me as the one to say, test, don't guess, that is so true. And I will test people to know. But I'll be honest with you, 90% of the time when I do urine analysis of vitamin C levels, I will find that folks are deficient. Oat tests, so organic acid tests tell the metabolites of how we break down fats, protein, carbs, but it also tells our vitamin and mineral deficiencies. It is incredible. I I can't even think of an oat test lately that I've seen that didn't have a vitamin C deficiency, including my own. And I take 4,000 milligrams a day. So what does that mean? I've got to dose myself up and test and see how things go. Now, here's another interesting component, getting back to vitamin C for, for a minute. Vitamin C has the ability topically to turn around cells. That's why when I first started talking today with the podcast, I had said, try it out and you'll see change in your skin right away. I recently had the pleasure of testing out a product from the company called Image. Image Skincare is a good line. It's a clinical line, but I'll be honest, it's not 100% clean. And herein begins the debate about clean, organic, natural products. Sometimes these products aren't as clean as they say they are. The company might have really good intentions, but they didn't think about their sourcing. They didn't think about the transportation, the plastic packaging, all of that. And all that seeps into their product. So we have to think about that in the clean industry. There's a website called Credo Beauty. Those companies are more or less vetted to be on that website and they have set up standards for their products. Image skincare is clinicals, skin suticals, some of the long-standing clinical lines that I actually really like are not on Credo Beauty. And it's because they do have some stabilizers that are considered a little more toxic. Are they of the the 12 most scary or dirty dozen of hormone disruptors? No. And I probably should digress for a second so I can tell you what a hormone disruptor is if you're not familiar. Hormone disrupting chemicals will mess with your body's natural hormone signaling. They'll like get in and mess with the receptors. So they kind of interfere. They run interference. BPA is the one we all know about. And interestingly enough, on a podcast recording, with Jenna Hua, who is the owner of Million Marker. It's a, she, she has a company that tests for 13 metabolites of chemicals in your, in your urine. She educated me on BPA that all these companies say they're BPA free, but there's BPA all the way to Z. So if they don't use BPA, they can use BPAB and they don't have to label it there. So are we getting clean cans? We have no freaking clue. Do we have clean plastic? No idea because we might be getting BPA, B, D, Z, X, Y, Z. Annoying. And the moral of the story here is, and, and what I'm getting at by telling you about this related to the not so clean lines of skincare, is that we're getting exposed to stuff left and right. And there's nothing we can do about it per se but help our body to detoxify better on a daily basis. That's how we counter these things. Because I'm not going to say that certain clinical skincare lines I'm going to avoid because I know they have certain chemicals in them. 
and you can judge me for this, but let me tell you this. If you are spending a lot of money on your skincare, it better freaking work, right? Because you want to get results. Some of these really natural, and I'll call them granola e skincare lines, do not give results. I'm testing out one right now that a girlfriend of mine sent it over to me. It's called Crunchy. Yes, it's an MLM. I do try MLM stuff because, hey, if something works, don't you want to know about it? So I'm going to try this brand Crunchy and see what's up. I'll let you guys know. But in the meantime, we got to be thinking about the, these chemicals and going, okay, what is my risk-benefit ratio of what's in it? Obviously, if you're putting it on your skin, it is going through your largest organ and you're putting it on daily. So you have to really weigh that out. So BPA is just one of them. Dioxins, another, it's a, it's a chemical that's found in our food supply. It's meat and meat and fish and eggs, butter, atrazine, phthalates. Those are in all kinds of skincare because they're, they're the stability in there. They're also the wrapping, but they're also the fragrance. Anytime it says fragrance, you got phthalates in there. Just know that that's there. Perchlorate, fire retardants, lead, arsenic, mercury, all these things are in certain products. You just need to be aware of that. And then, of course, there's pesticides if you're, if you're looking at where something's being sourced. So what do we do about all this? How do, how do we try to find something that's going to give us the good skin care and get us results but not have such a toxic impact on our body? You got to make sure your liver's working well. You got to make sure your gut's working well. And you got to make sure that your kidneys and your lymphatic system are able to drain things effectively. How do you do this? Well, most of the time, I don't find that estheticians are going to be a great resource there unless they're nutritionists or they've been trained. That's that. If you find someone like that, that's your gold mine right there. Just, just saying. So I decided that in my foray of working with women and health that I really think that it's important to start talking for for me to start talking about how to weigh out these chemicals because as I get older and the more I've been in the natural medicine field but also on the on the skincare side of things and seeing myself age I want stuff that works I'm not interested in that something's 85 times organic and been certified if it doesn't do anything for me. And I know that a lot of folks buy a lot of their products on Amazon. And a word of caution about Amazon. One, I've purchased things that I thought were organic and then I get the bottle and it doesn't even, like I read the ingredients on the label and the words aren't even spelled correctly. So it's a knockoff. And where do those knockoffs come from? I bet you can guess what country. So with Amazon, you really got to be careful and see that you're buying from the company. And it, still, it shows the store when you do buy things. So, so being aware of things is really, really important. Okay, now that we've got the awareness out of the way, let's talk more about skin. So vitamin C, game changer, also can help with cortisol effects on the skin. Now, what else does cortisol do to the skin? Cortisol can mess with your progesterone levels. And progesterone's interesting because in low levels, it allows cortisol to take over and it depletes your vitamin C. And then you can also have more fine lines, wrinkles, but also more histamine issues where you've got dry skin, itchy skin, rashy skin. That's low progesterone. Now, low estrogen can also contribute to that too. But in the pathway of making cortisol, the body will steal progesterone precursors and instead make cortisol. And so that's why I'm more mentioning that. Now, there is a connection to hyperpigmented skin and, and the term's called melasma. That's skin that looks like you've got a mask around. It's on the cheeks. It goes around the eyes. It goes, you know, sometimes can be around the jaw and it's a dark discolored area that is 
too much progesterone. And sometimes that'll happen to ladies when they're pregnant, but it also can be a sign that you're taking too much progesterone in your bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. So be on the lookout for this. If, if all of a sudden you have this dark skin that's, that's going around your eyes, that's going around your jaw, this is a, a thing that can happen. More often than not, skincare issues are low progesterone. And back to the hyperpigmentation for a second there, a lot of times this is the sign that you have sun damage from years and years and years. It also can be a sign that your skin heats up, it gets irritated, it doesn't like the hot. And so then what happens is the body creates more melanin and now you end up with more melanin and darker skin in in patches or in like in my case, my whole left side. And I've seen this happen over and over again with ladies, including myself, is that anytime I get overheated, hello, hot flushes, <laughs> and I'm out in the sun, it's it's not helping me. Let's put it that way. So what I tell a lot of my ladies and, and have to keep reminding myself is I need a wide brim hat. I need to wear it consistently and get out of the sun where it's like baking down on me. Now, this is tough to do if you hike, if you bike, if you want to be outside all day, day paddle boarding, like some of my favorite things. So my wide brim hat is my favorite thing in the world. And this year I slacked on it. And so my skin did its thing. Now, why am I telling you my whole story? Because I, I'm betting that there's more of you out there just like me that are struggling with this. And so I want to put that out there. But the other big thing is that your skin is your face to to the world. And when you're going through perimenopause and menopause and having hormone imbalances and you just don't feel good in your skin as a whole, having the skin issues on top of it can really be tough. It can really mess with your confidence. It can really mess with how you feel as a whole. And my MO is to just tackle it directly because hey, I am putting myself out there and I want people to see why my skin is the way it is. And and I did it to myself because I love being out in the sun. So what do I want you to take away from this? I really want you to embrace thinking about using L-ascorbic acid as a serum, a vitamin C serum for your skin as a daily basis, but also really using it after sun exposure because in how it can help to rejuvenate your skin and just turn things over to help you look a a lot fresher let's put it that way the other side of it is thinking about taking vitamin c internally to help you to counter the effects of stress if you at all get canker sores this is a big vitamin c deficiency warning for you if you get canker sores huge in fact if you're struggling with anxiety vitamin c may be helpful is it the number one thing i think about no but it's definitely something that i think can be absolutely a game changer. Now, why do we need to supplement vitamin C if we can get it in foods like kiwi or oranges or pineapple? Well, most of us have low stomach acid and we don't absorb the nutrients that we need. Bottom line. Now, are foods not as rich in the vitamins and minerals as they used to be? True. That's also true. But for many of us ladies, A lot of it has to do with what's going on in our gut. And our skin is a reflection of our internal health. How much sugar we eat. How our livers bog down. What's going on in terms of our air and water. These are all things that we need to be thinking about when we look at our skincare. Not just the topical stuff. Not thinking about peels, microderms, you know, microneedling, all of that. We need to be thinking about the internal side of things. Why do we have the skin issues that we do? I noticed a huge change in my skin in the last year with moving and and stress and things of that nature. I even used a vitamin C ointment. I'm going to call it an ointment. It's more of a serum, but it's also like a moisturizer from the company image on my leg, like I mentioned, and it got rid of my actinic keratosis on my leg. But I had never had any of that before. Why did it show up in the last year, like out of nowhere? Because that seems to be the way skin stuff happens. Stress. What does stress do to your gut? 
It lowers your stomach acid, so it makes it harder for you to digest your food. It also can make your gut a little bit more leaky, cause you to have more inflammatory weight gain, meaning water weight. It can mess with your hormones, absolutely. It lowers your progesterone. And if you're prone to having roller coasters of estrogen, which most ladies who are perimenopausal will, this is a big deal. Hormones and skin go hand in hand. And and in my email that I put out today, I talked about how you wear your life more or less on your face and your skin. It shows, you know, did you smoke cigarettes? You can see that around the lips from that like puckering motion to smoke the cigarette. Did you frown more or did you smile more? That's why they call them smile lines and frown lines. Did you go through a really stressful experience? You can get the forehead lines, the 11 lines as they call them. So what's the solution to all this? It's working on your digestive system, but also considering topical things that can help you. Working on both of those things and working on stress management. In my email, I talked about nine categories in particular. And I truly believe that, yes, we need to have all those dialed in. But if you're looking at the number of nine and being like, oh my God, I can't handle that, start with three. Something topically, work on your stress and work on your gut. How do you work on your gut? Find out what's going on in it first. I like doing organic acids testings, like the metabolomics from from, from Genova, NutraEvals and the other version of it, the metabolomics you can do at home. NutraEval, you just gotta have a blood draw done. There's also OMX from Diagnostic Solutions that I'm starting to use a little bit more because it's more cost effective. Those can tell you what's going on in your gut, can tell you what's going on with your nutrient deficiencies. If you have any chemicals, heavy metals, great test for that. Then you know a baseline, what's going on. Then from there, you can decide, do I need to work on microbiome? So my bugs in my gut, do I need to work on just basics of digestion? I don't know how many people are blown away when I tell them that low stomach acid is related to hair loss. More often than not. More often than not, it's not the thyroid. More often than not, it's not the iron, the testosterone, all these different things. It's stomach acid. And if I had to venture back to like looking at digestion and how to fix someone's leaky gut or how to fix someone's digestive deficiency, we first have to start with helping you produce stomach acid effectively. You may be on an acid blocking medicine, the PPI as they call them. But do you really need it? Or was it that you just didn't have enough acid in the first place? So food sat there and then the acid came up. It's a very good question to think about. Now, yes, there's gut lining repair protocols. I like a company called Mega, or it's called Microbiome Labs, but it's Mega Mucosa is the product. Collagen, bone broth, BPC-157, the peptide for gut lining repair. Try butrin. It's butyrate. It's the good fatty acids that your gut lining likes. These are all things that can help with your gut lining. So there's a lot you can do to help with your gut and help reestablish balance. Beneficial bacteria as well. It's a lot and it can be confusing. And what I've discovered over the last year is that I really do like helping support women in, in figuring out what's going on with their skin. And right now I'm on a journey to put mine back in check. So I invite you to watch the journey. And if you're looking for some help, I can help. We can do testing. We can see what needs to be tweaked and, and get you feeling more comfortable in your skin. If you're interested in working with me, all you have to do is hit reply to my emails if you're on my email list. If you're not, go over to my website at drjkrausnd.com. Jump on that email list. For those of you who are like, hmm, I want to see how this journey goes. All right, jump on Instagram. So Dr. Dr. Janine, J-A-N-N-I-N-E, Kraus, K-R-A-U-S-E. Watch the journey. And stay tuned. On these Wednesdays, I'm going to start talking about issues that are near and dear to women's hearts and, and things that are real. And I'm taking questions. I'd love to hear what you guys want to know about and share my knowledge that I have over the, gosh, 16 plus years now that I've been practicing. All right, guys. 
That's it for today. Hopefully you got a little insight into skincare. Maybe you're going to try out some vitamin C, credobeauty.com if you want the cleanest, most effective products, skincare lines that are clinical and you're willing to offset a little bit by making sure your liver and kidney and lymphatics are working. Skinceuticals, Image, Is Clinicals are all wonderful lines. Cosmetics is another one. That's what I actually use for my vitamin C on the regular. And stay tuned to Instagram where I've got what's going on on a daily basis. All right, until next time, I'm Dr. Janine Krause. Thanks for listening. Hey, fellow health junkie. Thanks for listening to the Health Fix Podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.